To control the system settings of your Mac, you can access them at any time by running the System Preferences application from your dock. Or you can select the Apple icon in the menu bar and then click System Preferences. Here we see a variety of things we can change organized into different categories. We have Personal Settings, the settings for our hardware, we can change the settings for Internet and Wireless, we have System Settings, and then we have Other, which is used by third-party applications. Almost all settings relevant to customizing a Mac can be found in the System Preferences application. I highly encourage you to browse around to see what options you have available to yourself. You'll find that there are many settings that will adjust the way your Mac works that you might find you prefer done a certain way, such as automatically hiding the dock, changing your mouse sensitivity, changing your desktop background, creating multiple user accounts on your Mac, adding parental controls. All of these things can be done from system preferences. Now that we've gone through the basics of Mac OS X, I'm just gonna customize my Mac a little bit and walk you through it. I'll start by changing the dock a little bit, some of the options available to us, and then I'm gonna change my desktop background. So let's go up to System Preferences and select Dock. And the first thing I want to do is I want to adjust the size of my dock. And I want to enable magnification. When I enable magnification, what it does is it magnifies the dock wherever my cursor is. So wherever I highlight with my cursor, the dock magnifies. So that's quite nice. I enjoy that effect. I like using it, so I'll leave it like that. I can also adjust the size of the dock, the permanent size. I'll leave it as it is now. And then you can change the position on the screen if you want. You can have it on the left or on the right. I just prefer it at the bottom because I have more width to work with on my widescreen monitor. You can also choose the effect you want when minimizing applications. So if I open the App Store, and I minimize it, you'll see it's got, it just scales down into its icon in the dock. If I change to genie effect, it looks like a genie going into his bottle. So I'll just put it back to scale. And then personal thing that I prefer is I prefer my applications to minimize into their own icon in the dock, as opposed to minimizing to a new icon. So I'm going to select this option, Minimize Windows into Application Icon. So when I select it, I'll bring back the App Store from here in the dock. But now when I minimize, you'll see that it minimizes into its icon in the dock and not create a new icon. And to bring it back, I can just select App Store again and it'll come back. And then the last thing I want to do is I want my dock to hide when I'm not using it. So I'm going to say Automatically Hide and Show the Dock. So now it's hidden when I'm not using it, but when I want to use it, I just bring my cursor down to the bottom of my screen and the dock will reappear. And now what I want to do is I want to change my desktop background. So I'm going to click show all to get out of the preferences for my dock. It brings me back to the main system preferences window and I'm going to go to desktop and screensaver. And under desktop, I'm going to change my desktop background to be Let's see what looks good. Let's choose that image. And basically you can browse to your pictures folder if you have your own pictures you want. You can use the plus button to browse on your computer for any pictures you have stored anywhere else. And you can choose that for your desktop background. And actually I'm gonna change it back to the Galaxy just cause I like that. And now my Mac is customized a little bit better to how I enjoy it to work. Go ahead and just play around with your Mac and change the settings as you prefer and Mac, make the Mac your own. Now it's time for some tips and tricks. The first tip I'm going to show you is for those of you running Mac OS X Line. If you have just started using Line, you'll undoubtedly have noticed that the scrolling in web pages and documents is inverted. If I open New York Times, when I scroll to scroll down the page, I need to scroll up with my mouse. And if I want to scroll back up the page, I need to scroll down with my mouse. 
basically the logic behind this new system is that you're scrolling the content and not the scroll bar. So if I want the content to go up, you'll notice the page is going up. I need to scroll up. And if I want the content to go down, I need to scroll down. It comes from the use of the iPad and the iPhone as if you're using the trackpad to drag the canvas of your web page around with your finger. Hopefully it hasn't been driving too many of you crazy, but to switch it back to what you're used to, just go to System Preferences, and then select Mouse, and then all you need to do is uncheck this option to move content in the direction of finger movement when scrolling or navigating. So if I uncheck that, and I close my System Preferences, now when I scroll, if I want to go down the page, I scroll down. And if I want to go up the page, I scroll up. Now the scroll bar moves in the direction that I want to scroll and not the content of the page. Some people prefer running applications from Spotlight on their Mac instead of from the dock. To access Spotlight, you can simply click on the icon in the top right hand corner or you can use the keyboard shortcuts command plus spacebar. Now if I want to run an application, I simply type the name of the application, Safari, and press enter, and the application will run. This can be handy if you run a lot of applications and don't want to have them all in your dock. So now people aren't sure what to use their dock for if they're running the applications from Spotlight. Well, I typically take all the shortcuts to applications out of my dock, and then I use my dock only to show running applications. So what I do is I then disable the blue light underneath the icons because that light is meant to display running applications. But if I'm only using the dock to display running applications, that light is no longer needed. So go to System Preferences. We'll go to Dock. And then we'll deselect the last option to show indicator lights for open applications. So I'll deselect that. And now in my dock, there's no more lights. And what my dock is showing me is it's just showing me applications that are running. So if I quit Safari, I'm going to remove it from my dock now. So now I have two applications running, Finder and Pages. And if I open Safari by using Spotlight, Command Space, Safari is still there. Now I go to my dock and it shows me Safari. The majority of people will prefer to keep the use of the dock standard by just clicking on icons that they want to use. But for some professionals that run a bunch of different applications and prefer running them from Spotlight, they might find this workflow helpful. Before it used to be a slight hassle to find and insert special characters into documents. With OS X Line, now when you are typing, all you need to do is press and hold the key on your keyboard to see the list of accented alternatives. So if I open pages and create a new document, I'll show you some examples. If I hold down B on my keyboard, nothing happens because there are no accented alternatives. But if I hold down E on my keyboard, you'll see now it shows me a bunch of different alternatives. And all I then need to do is to select the corresponding number underneath the character to choose that character. So I'm going to press 2 on my keyboard while still holding down E and you'll see it automatically selects the second option. And on that note we'll end here. That's all for this Apple Champ tutorial. See you next time.